back inside the Peterson Event Center with head coach Dan Fisher as the Panthers finish 18 and 0 at home. Let's start there and what that means to you. Well, you know, it's been a, it's just been a dream season and you know, we just want to keep it going. I, I like coaching this group. They like playing with each other and um, you know, it's uh, it's not over yet. We have a group that 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 trains at a high level every day and so we feel like we don't need to find anything new when we come to the game. We just just play our normal game and um, a credit to the players and just thanks to the city of Pittsburgh for supporting us. We are ready to determine our new champion. The number 12 seed goes to the ACC's Pittsburgh. Pitt has had a phenomenal season. Yeah, Dan Fisher in his six years done a great job. Remember, they were one of the last undefeated teams along with BYU. It means everything. We've it's something we dreamed about all year and um, really been talking about it for a couple of years. And just really pleased with the decision of the committee to let us host and um, excited to start preparing. You know, we're just really excited to be able to play at home after experiencing the Pete and its atmosphere last Wednesday. We're just so ecstatic to be home and for all the hard work that we put into just being able to be congratulated by being able to play at home and playing for our city. It starts as a game, a gathering of friends. And slowly, as some begin to sit back, others stand out. The joy of playing turns to passion. And as the skills develop, so do the minds. And they begin to seek challenges, peers, and mentors to further their abilities and opportunities. The love and passion becomes a thirst for people in a place We make history today in Pittsburgh that will embrace and push a hunger for excellence a and to be in and among champions. These are the dreamers, scholars, leaders. These are the guides, teachers, mentors. And this is the opportunity, the challenge, the place. This is Pitt Beyond the Script. This week on Pitt Beyond the Script, we sit down with Pat Bostic, a member of the Panther broadcast team, as we look ahead and prepare for the ACC championship game with Pitt facing the number two ranked Clemson Tigers. Here come the surging Panthers. We'll visit with a coach of another championship squad, head volleyball coach Dan Fisher, as he prepares his Panthers for the NCAA tournament and your chance to see Pitt in action for the first two rounds here at the Peak. Plus, we'll visit with athletic director Heather Like and hear what drew her to the University of Pittsburgh. We'll visit with the Pitt gymnastics team as they gear up for another season. And to celebrate the inaugural class of the Pitt Athletic Hall of Fame, another of our Panther profiles. This week on Pitt Beyond the Script. It is a great honor and a great privilege for me to welcome Heather Like as our newest athletic director for the University of Pittsburgh. Why Pitt? Well, I've said it a lot, and I will never waver really from this philosophy is what you do is really important. Where you do it is sort of next important, but who you, who you do it for and with is ultimately the most important factor in, in I think, job and career, you know, opportunities. So Pitt, the university itself, was, you know, an extraordinary world-class academic institution, high level of research, highly ranked in the country, a member of the ACC. You know, you're in a Power Five conference where you can go compete at the highest levels. You know, you can go compete for ACC championships, and if you're competing for ACC championships, you're in the hunt for a national championship. When we wear the blue and gold, we'll wear it with pride. We'll expect to win, and we'll prepare for success. And so that, combination of just really high academic prestige and reputation along with the athletic platform was very attractive to me. And then you add it into a city of champions where people expect you to be great, and I like that. I want to work in a place there's great expectations placed on you. It's the challenge of instilling a belief in, that we can compete with the best. And then the icing on the cake was, you know, it was very interesting on its face. But I didn't know anybody here. You know, I didn't know 
board members, I didn't know university leadership. And so when I had a chance to interview and, you know, obviously meet Chancellor Gallagher, that really, you know, sealed the opportunity in my mind, you know, because who I work for really matters. He's an extraordinary leader, decisive, visionary, intelligent, certainly cares about the impact that athletics can have and, and understands how it can connect and unite our campus and our community and our city. Believes in what we're doing, you know, and, uh, and so that was just really attractive to me, all of those factors. And the fact that it's located in a place that's pretty close to my hometown is Canton, Ohio. I'm about two hours away from my family. Um, that was really appealing as well. We are thrilled to call Pitt our home. Hail to Pitt, thank you. What a phenomenal world we live in, where the impossible is anything but, no matter the game. We are always playing for Pittsburgh, on the biggest stages, amplifying the quietest voices, leveraging knowledge for society's gain, the builders of the future. We empower minds. We ignite fire and soar higher. Hail to Pitt. No other industry is changing as rapidly as healthcare. What's needed are leaders. The University of Pittsburgh Joseph M. Katz Graduate School of Business in partnership with UPMC offers an executive MBA that focuses on healthcare. The 19-month hands-on program is taught by world-class faculty from CATS and UPMC. It's designed for experienced healthcare professionals seeking to transform the industry. To learn more, visit emba.pitt.edu. Hey, Pittsburgh. What's up, Pitt fans? Sports fans? We've got a brand new show that you're going to love. It doesn't matter what your sport. we got them all covered. Behind the scenes. Interviews with players and coaches. And lots of highlights. So if you like sports, stories about great people and character, this show is for you. Pit Beyond the Script. Tune in. Set your DVR. Thursdays and all through the week. Pit, 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 Pit Beyond, Beyond the, script. the Script. Boom. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Pit Beyond the Script alongside Pat Bostic of the Pit Panthers broadcast team. I'm Rob King. Let's jump into some football. Pat, obviously against Miami, uh, not the Panthers' day. I thought after that field goal early in the second half, maybe they were going to start to rally, but then Miami immediately came up with a touchdown, and that was kind of that. Yeah, and it was a top five defense in Miami that that really was uh, lived up to its expectations in billing. They were terrific all day, and uh, the Panthers couldn't get anything going offensively. Their defense kept them in the game. Uh, but a couple special teams errors, some penalties. The Panthers just couldn't get out of their own way. And you got to give credit to Miami, too. That defense was as advertised. You know, when you talked about the Panthers' defense, and I'm glad you did, because there's been so much talk about the ground game. And I do want to ask you about that and the offense. But this defense has really been pretty good over the last half of the season. They have. I mean, turnovers the last two weeks have been key. Panthers weren't able to capitalize on that turnover, those two turnovers against Miami. That was really the, their downfall. Uh, but against uh, Wake Forest, the pick by DeMar Hamlin, a fumble recovery against Miami. They've made plays when they needed to. And again, I thought they kept them in the Miami game, uh, but you can only hold on so long. Units have to feed off of one another. Defense to feed off offense, offense, special teams, and so forth. And again, you, you try to hold them in that game so long, they just broke late with some big runs. Kenny Pickett came into this season with a lot of expectations based on what he did last year against Miami. As an old quarterback, how have you seen him progress? Well, first things first, he's not turning the ball over. And that, that's been really um, his calling card late in the year, has been protecting the football. The Wake Forest game was, I think, a glimpse into what he can do. So Pickett goes shotgun with a slot to the right. Fires for the end zone. Touchdown, yeah, baby! Panthers. I thought he could have been a little bit better against Miami, but there were some shots down the field, a completion to Maurice French that was unfortunately dropped that forced him to kick a field goal, that if they score a touchdown there, the momentum is completely different. But I thought, by and large, Kenny has matured. He's protected the ball. He's protected the play call. He's made a couple plays with his feet, and he'll have to be terrific against Clemson uh, if Pitts to compete. And it's pulled in, and that is Maurice French on his way. Panthers touchdown. All right, Pat, you have a whole season to look back at, one game to look forward to here against Clemson. Are there things the Panthers can draw on 
successful things over the course of the season that could help them against the Tigers? Well, firstly, you got to look at how well they ran the football. And uh, we talked about how they want to get back to that. It'll be, it'll be tough, tough sledding against these, uh, these big D-line for Clemson. But you look back at the course of the season and what they were able to do, even in their losses against Penn State to rush for over 200, dealing with a very good front four. They want to get Quadri Olison and Darren Hall going. They want to get behind this veteran offensive line without Jimmy Morrissey, which I don't think you can understate the, the, just the loss that that is, not having him. Getting another week now with Connor Dentino at center and just ride those horses, let those guys run. And not always just battering Ram style too. These guys have shown speed, breakaway speed. They're gonna need uh, to knock off a couple big runs in this game with some big plays to help them compete against Clemson in the ACC championship. You said big plays and during the winning streak, the Panthers not only got big plays out of Hall and Olsen, but the, the ability to take the shot down the field, the ability to come up with a big play in the vertical passing game as well. Pickett shotgun snap. He throws it long down the right sideline, and the pass will be caught. Was he inbound? Taysir Mack, wow. He was. Yeah, Taysir Mack has been a, a guy. We didn't hear his name a lot against Miami. Had a couple catches, but he's been a big play guy. I mean, he was first or second in the conference in yards per reception, uh, with over 23 yards per reception. He's a guy that can take the top off. Fires a bullet, and on his way is Taysir Mack. He outruns him. He gets to the 10. He gets to the 5. He's into the end zone. They're going to have to do that. Off play action, take a shot down the field. Taysir Mack, Maurice French, has proven to be a guy that can make a play down the field in one-on-one -on -one scenarios. Cut for a touchdown. If you look back at the Miami game, you probably think you want to take a couple more of those shots because they've proven to pay off. And again, when you want to soften a defense up that's going to try to stop your run, they know it's your bell cow, you've got to be able to take the top off the defense for that D coordinator to fear you. Uh, you're talking about Clemson, obviously, and this is the ACC championship game. And one of the things that would also seem to be would really help the, the Panthers if they can get that ground game going again. One of the top 15 rushing attacks in the country going against the Clemson team that you know, three of those guys in the, on the defensive line are predicted to go in the first round, including a, a potential top five pick. So it's it's not going to be easy, but that's where the Panthers' bread has been buttered this year. It, it has, and they're going to learn a lot from that Miami game going into Clemson because that's another defense with draft picks all over the field. Um, you got those two big tackles in Wilkins and Lawrence um, for Clemson you're going to have to deal with. I think it's one of those games where you have to throw to set up the run a little bit, get the ball on the perimeter, get that defense looking side to side a little bit, and then hit him with the run game late. Kenny Pickett's going to have to be efficient, probably going to have to use his legs a little bit in this game to also expand the defense so that Clemson just can't honker down and try to stop the run. But I agree with you. The run game will be critical, uh, but they have to throw to set up the run a little bit, soften this defense up. Ten, five, Panthers touchdown. Well, you don't become number two just by being one-dimensional. They're, they're an outstanding all-around team, and obviously they're very gifted offensively. What are the Panthers going to need to do defensively in this game, Pat? First, for, first and foremost, stop the run. Travis Etienne is a, a big play guy. He, he's been great all year. They rushed for over 300 yards last week against South Carolina. So you got to stop the run. Put the ball in Trevor Lawrence's hands. He's a young guy. He's protected it. He's been effective, and he's got talent all around him. But I think if the Panthers want to have a recipe for success, make Trevor Lawrence beat you and try to get after him and make him make plays under pressure. They, they definitely have their work cut out for him. We saw a couple years ago when they upset him. And it's over, ladies and gentlemen. The Panthers have defeated the Clemson Tigers. An unbelievable upset. Regardless of what happens in the outcome of this game, I think that, and obviously the Panthers hoping for victory, but I think this can already be qualified as a success this season by winning the first ever Coastal Division title for the band. Yeah, I think you look at the, how it was done too, Rob. You know, the first month of the year was not pretty. A couple lopsided losses, but they rallied, they looked in the mirror, they bonded together, they didn't quit. And uh, they were able to tack off four in a row, five of six, and uh, secure a bowl game. Obviously, they didn't do that last year. And, you know, clinch a Coastal Division championship for the first time. Touchdown, Charlotte. Here come the surging Panthers. Get into this game where you have an opportunity to beat Clemson. I think a lot can be said about, you know, going into this game, playing loose, having fun, and going after it, giving Clemson all you can. And then uh, you see where the dust settles. But a uh, huge opportunity for this program. I think it's a, uh, a big step forward to clinch the Coastal Division and to play on a stage like they're going to play on Saturday night. Well, exciting times for the Panthers football team for sure. Pat, thanks very much. Thank you, Rob. All right, stick around. We still have more to come on Pit Beyond the Script right after this. Don't go away. Pit Beyond the Script will return right after this. I think the key component of a good environment for learning is a sense of partnership. The students 
need to feel that they have a stake in their own learning. I think that, that the key to that creation, that kind of environment, is making the connection. In the Benedum Hall on the third floor, one place in the corridor, you'll see table tennis. We are all there, uh, almost equal, uh, playing a game of table tennis and exchanging ideas. So I think this kind of seamless integration of work and relaxation is what helps make you make that connection. So you're ready for the exam? And so once you connect and engage the student, uh, you can tailor your delivery of knowledge to match that student's expectation. Continue to play football the way you're taught. Great technique, run to the ball, tackle. I want turnovers the second half. Does everybody understand? Get with your coach. I don't think you can choose what kind of coach you want. I want the tough guy, the you know, the nice guy, the spiritual guy. I want all guys to have everything. There you go, there it is. I mean, you want the complete coach, but the first thing you want to have is, is good people. You have what it takes on every snap, the mental fortitude. When you know, first tried to put the staff together, it was people you knew that were people of the same type of philosophy you have as a coach, and it's, it's to be around good people and walk through that building and say, hey, coach, what's up, and have fun with those guys and want to be around them. Dress it up. Good. I'll be fast, hand up fast. If our kids don't want to come in this building and be around our coaches, we have major problems because they won't be here. You know, and they may physically be here, but mentally they won't be here. Give it all you got, man. Empty your tank. Good? So in hiring a staff, you know, I was looking for you know the greatest people I could have, people that cared about young men like I did, that had a passion for coaching. Let's go, let's go. And nowadays, you see coaches getting into coaching to make money. You know, back in the day, I didn't get into coaching to make money. My wife knew I was gonna be a poor man for a long time, uh, making $18,000 in my first job, so I didn't get into coaching for money. And whatever you sacrifice, you better make sure the other guy sacrifice or we're not gonna get what we want. So looking for great people, and, and then you're looking for great coaches after that. But I truly believe, you know, I can teach you how to coach linebackers. You know, I can teach someone to you know, coach the secondary. I can teach someone to coach the offense line. But I can't teach you to be a good person. To me, it's get the good people first that are going to listen and do it the way you want to do it, and then mold the coaching style. And you hope you can get the great person and the great coach at the same time. That's obviously what you'd like to get, and I think we've, we've done that. Beautiful. Great job. Relentless. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is. Go! Go! Welcome back to Pit Beyond the Script. We're with head coach Dan Fisher, the women's volleyball team, finishing off another unbelievable regular season, a second consecutive ACC title. This one outright. Congratulations, and how does it feel? Well, it's, man, it's, uh, you know, I haven't really had time to sit down and reflect, but it was a goal to win the ACC and to host first round, and so, um, you know, it definitely was a great moment, uh, you know, to hear our name called and know we're going to be playing at the Pete, so. And not easy with that match down at Florida State to win it outright. No, I, you know, gosh, it sounds cliche, but winning on the road is uh, in a good conference isn't easy. And um, it wasn't easy at Florida State, and it wasn't easy at Miami, but, uh, you know, we found a way. That will do it. Hail to Pittsburgh. The Panthers have clinched the ACC. Four of your players are all ACC first team selections. That, obviously, that's a testament to how good they are, but also to where the program is right now as well. Yeah, and I, and I think we have some others that maybe were overlooked for some other honors. I, you know, one of our strengths we've talked about all year is that everyone on our, on our team is skilled, everyone's got an arm, and we can set anyone. And so our, our balance has kind of been, you know, what separates us over other teams. Anika Markowitz with kill number 12. And a kill from Kayla Lund. And do it. The Panthers dominate in three sets here in Pittsburgh. Second time that you are ACC Coach of the Year. Uh, that honor get old? <laughs> I'll, t <laughs> you know, I, I'll take it. <laughs> no, I mean, how does it feel? I mean, how does it feel knowing that your program's at this point where you're, you're talking about four players, maybe more being, you know, first team and yourself being Coach of the Year two consecutive yeah. years? I, I just, I always struggle with what coach, I mean, there's so many aspects to being a coach. I mean, there's recruiting, there's, there's running a program, there's how good you are in the gym, and then there, there's building a program. Uh, so I, I guess it's just something I feel like I'm not that good at yet. Um, it's, but it, it is nice to, 
you know, see our program grow and feel like, okay, like, you know, we weren't getting over 3,000 at a game before I got here. And, and then just to see us in a position to host is, is pretty cool. Final regular season home game, does that mean something for the seniors? You know, we did it this year where, where two games prior we did the senior night. Uh, and so uh, hopefully that got a lot of the emotions out. I think it was there was just a lot of excitement playing in the Pete, playing on the new court we have. Saved by KO. And Markowitz finishes. Eventually when it is the last game and hopefully in the championship game, they're going to have left behind a legacy here, aren't they? They're part of a transition of the Pitt women's volleyball program. Without a doubt. I mean, and, and some of them weren't necessarily the, the biggest recruits. I mean, at the time when I committed to Kamalani, and I think she had like a D2 offer, and there wasn't a lot of people recruiting her, and people thought she was undersized, and our program wasn't where it was. And so, you know, it was just me and her like talking about a vision for the future, and so for her to. And, and she comes from a place where volleyball is so big, and so for her to kind of come in under those conditions, someone like that, and to see where the program's gone to is, uh, and she's been a huge part of it. And so, and then the same thing with Angela and, and uh, Hannah and, and Emily, is they've, it, the program's not what it, it is now, what it was a couple years ago. You expected, or should have expected, to have two home matches. But we've seen teams disappointed in selection shows when you're watching them on TV. What yeah. was the selection process like? Was it nerve wracking? No, it's more nerve wracking when you're on the bubble. I mean, that's, that's for, you know, I, you know it, it was good to know we're in. Um, I did really want to host, and so that was nice to see that. But, but ultimately, we've had a goal to make a run. And so if we can do that, you know, that's going to be the, that's going to be the deal. And um, yeah, it was, probably the least nerve-wracking one of the, <laughs> that part of the last four years. You've been to a couple tournaments, obviously. Will that help you, even though with all the hoopla going on and the excitement of matches to Pete, will that help keep you focused? This team was, for two years in a row, been, been in the tournament, so I think it helps a lot. I, you know, I remember the first year we went to Penn State, the practice we had before game one was just awful. And I'm looking around going, what's going on? Are we nervous? And one of the girls says, yeah, we're really nervous. <laughs> like, and, I was, uh, and I go, oh, OK, well, let's get the jitters out. And I appreciate the honesty. But last year wasn't like that at all. And so I think that we have a, a group that's used to the pressure, used to you know, playing in front of big crowds. And so I think it just excites them. And, um, but yeah, it matters to have experience. So it's not just the women on your team that are excited, not just you, but everybody here, uh, the entire Pitt community really excited about what's coming up this weekend, and best of luck. Thank you so much. All right, stick around. We still have more to come on Pip Beyond the Script right after this. To be a leader in business, you need a global perspective. The strength and the reputation of the University of Pittsburgh Joseph M. Katz Graduate School of Business gives you a world of opportunity. Our Executive MBA Worldwide program is tailored to the unique needs of high-level business executives. The hands-on program will advance your career and your global network as you study on campus and abroad. Be ready to lead in a global world. Be Cats Ready. What a phenomenal world we live in, where the impossible is anything but, no matter the game. We are always playing for Pittsburgh, on the biggest stages, amplifying the quietest voices, leveraging knowledge for society's game the builders of the future. We empower minds. We ignite fire and soar higher. Hail to Pitt. What I remember most about Kathy is her game face. Kathy enrolled at Pitt in the fall of 1975, and she began to rewrite the record books. I always view Kathy Stetler and her accomplishments as being the first star female athlete at the University of Pittsburgh. A four-year All-American and a national champion in the 50-yard fly. She had a very long stroke, but it was very powerful and a, and a really great kick. How bad I wanted to be on a relay with her. And then my freshman year at Nationals, 
We Got All American. I was just so thrilled to be on that relay with her. Her coaches would tell you, and I think her teammates would tell you, that she really set the tone in terms of training and working hard and being determined. Kathy was a very, very competitive person and really excelled from day one in the swimming. And, you know, the rest is history. They really set everything in motion for the women's swimming program to be so successful. She is definitely our pioneer for swimming. And she set the bar for where swimming was gonna go. And she didn't let us down. Gymnastics teaches so many things. It teaches discipline, it teaches commitment, it teaches goal setting, all of those things that are so important for life after college. Those are things that are gonna take you far. So we really pride ourselves in instilling those values in each athlete. I think the biggest thing I learned from gymnastics is self-discipline. I don't know how I would do college without gymnastics, I guess. <laughs> gymnastics is something that you're always striving for perfection, but you never can quite reach it. It's so high demanding, physically, mentally, emotionally, and so what we always tell our girls is at the end of the day, if you have that passion for the sport, it should be fun. You know, this is something that not everybody can do. So just have fun and love what you're doing, and that's what really gets you through those hard days. So our team is interesting in the sense of it's individual routines, but it makes up the team score. So the team is what matters at the end of the day, but you need each individual competitor to be their best in order for the team to be successful. And so we really tell the girls that we feed off of each other's energy and you want to keep that high energy the entire time. Our team is awesome. There's lots of fun personalities on the team and uh, everybody's super excited and it hypes everybody up and so it creates a really fun atmosphere and gets the fans and crowd into it too. It's all natural with our team and it's genuine. They're just so excited for the person standing next to them, for what we're creating as a program and for really what we're achieving. We're so close, we're really like a family, so um, it helps you through the worst days and boosts you up on the good days, and uh, we wouldn't be able to accomplish the things that we do without that. Confident in this team's ability, we are resilient. With passion and poise, we take pride in our program. For gymnastics, it's really important to have a like family aspect to it because like you're not competing for yourself, you're competing for the team, and Sam made us a family. She's tough, but she has all of our backs all the time, and she's, Amazing. Cheers. Sam Snyder is awesome, and our assistant coaches, Ryan and Dave, are amazing also. What you want come mid-April starts right now. They push us as people as well as gymnasts, and they really set the bar high for everybody, but we're really starting to push to a higher standard and um, succeed. One, two, three. my first year, I'm just most proud of this team's confidence and how far they've come from when we first stepped foot in the door. I think I've really just improved just as a, as a gymnast, but also just in my persona as well. To see their personal growth on individual levels, but then also as a team, as a unit, has been so rewarding and just has really, at times, left me speechless. For me, if our girls can graduate and they can be strong, they can be independent, not afraid to ask for what they want and to go after their dreams, then we've been successful. Thank you for watching Pit Beyond the Script. 